Well, thank you so much for staying with us. Now, let's have a conversation around the justice sector reform. The Nigeria's administration of justice is facing many, many, many challenges. Congestion of cases in courts, delays in the prompt resolution of cases, alleg allegations of corruption in the formal justice uh, system, a punitive and retributive approach to crime with little or no room for for restitution repatriation and reparation of victims of crimes adversarial hostile and technical nature of litigation the issues are numerous now it is evident that the time has come to overhaul the country's justice sector what many have said to be overdue now, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Agbemiese, and said the forthcoming National Justice Reform Summit will deliberate on draft legislations proposed to um, address some of the, 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 the challenges within the justice sector. He said the summit will be conducted in collaboration with the NBA, that's the Nigerian Bar Association, and the National Judicial Council, NJC, and it will be held in Abuja on April 23, beg your pardon, April 24 and 25. What do all these mean, really? Um, I bet you're asking. Let's have that conversation. We expect to have two senior advocates of Nigeria this morning. Suleiman Usman uh, is a former Attorney General of Sokoto State, and he joins us from Sokoto. He's right here with us, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Well, let, let, well while, we, while we expect our second guest, let's begin with you, uh, Mr. Usman. Uh, there are those who say that the, these issues are, are um, that they are overdue and that um, the the cases need to the issues need to be resolved now or else tell us what the implications of these issues that have been raised are well justice is the greatest interest of man on earth it is the bond of society it is the cornerstone of human existence so that is why anytime any reform is initiated, any time the justice system is uh, being looked at with a view to improving it, it is timely. We cannot say it is too uh, uh, soon or it should have been uh, uh, the other time. So I commend the effort of the Attorney General in trying to bring collaborative effort between the Federal Ministry of Justice, the National Judicial Council, the NBA, and all the other stakeholders. Perhaps the, the body of senior advocates of Nigeria should also be involved in the body of ventures, because these are the uh, main bodies that regulates uh, the legal profession, so that uh, the justice sector will be made to be responsive and it will be able to deliver justice to all manner of citizens uh, according to law without fear of evil, affection or ill will. Uh, like you've said in the background, the justice sector is bedeviled by a lot of uh, problems and, and bottles, uh, one of which is uh, the prominent of which is delay and uh, corruption. Delay uh, in the sense that if you start a case from a high court before the case is fully put to a turn arrest and ended at the Supreme Court, a normal civil matter will take an average of 20 years. Wow. So at the end of the day, whatever might come out of that will not be said to be justice mm -hmm. because justice delayed is justice denied. That's why since Magna Carta, Chapter 40 of Magna Carta says, to no one shall we delay or deny the right to justice. So we need a timely and responsive justice system, both criminal justice system and civil justice system. And that is one way we can really uh, uh, earn the confidence of investors so that investors can come in and invest because they know that the machinery of resolution of this 
is uh, uh, seamless, is not uh, bedeviled by bottlenecks, and you can get speedy justice. Mm. Justice uh, uh, within a reasonable time, not justice at the altar of speed. Yes, sir, there are many things that Nigerians are hoping will be sorted out uh, at this summit that is about to take place, and uh, some of which you have already dealt with. Among them also is um, a reform that will ensure that everyone gets justice, irrespective of their status, because during elections you must agree all kind of, or should i say after elections all kinds of judgments take place that make us wonder you know what is going on is this really justice is this fair so there's a lot that nigerians are looking forward to well part of the reforms that we must continue to uh, do uh, are institutional reforms we have to look at the laws all the time. You know, laws are man-made and not perfect. And uh, most of these laws uh, uh, and even decisions are influenced by certain factors that, uh, you know, affects the decision of uh, uh, the particular mm -hmm. judicts. So that's why we need to have robust, comprehensive laws that are up-to-date, fair, and reasonable so that uh, Justice will be ensured mm. and um, assured to all citizens. You know, Mr. So Osman, in, when we, my, my in apologies, last, uh, if, if you session, don't mind me butting in, sir, my, my sincere apologies. Is it a problem of the laws or the problem or the challenge of interpretation? Or maybe because, well, for instance, just a second, for instance, we have been told quite a number of times that there are so many cases that have backlogged over the years in the courts. So many people in the prisons, in their tens of thousands, that should not be there simply because the law or you know of, of the delay in the system and all of that. So is it a problem of the law or, or the laws, the constitution, or the practice? So speak to that first of all. Yes, the problems are both. There is problem of the law, there is problem of the practice, uh, and even the constitutional framework. You know, our constitution, you know the history of it, you know the history of the efforts at amending the constitution, the various constitutional conferences, and the various amendments the National Assembly has made uh, in recent years, up to the court alteration. Uh, but notwithstanding all these efforts, we still lack a very robust and comprehensive constitution that will guarantee the uh, 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 rights of citizens. First of all, even in terms of fundamental rights, Chapter 2 is still not justiciable, and that is the one that deals with economic and social rights of the citizens, and that is the one that you will use to hold government accountable to ensure good governance. So there are so many things. Sorry, on that one, very quickly, uh, why is it not justiceable? Like Sorry, Mr. Osman, so if you can hear me. Criminal justice Just a system. second. Why is it not justiceable? Because it has not been made to be so by the law, the organic law itself, the Constitution, has uh, uh, made provisions to ensure that it is only when it is practical. And, you know, the issue of practicability is uh, uh, subjective that government is now encouraged to do it as a matter of uh, uh, fundamental objective and directive principle. But in other claims, not just the uh, chapter two of the constitution that deals with socioeconomic rights, even the side generations of rights, like the right to develop, are made justiciable. Government is uh, held accountable. Now you have to wait for legislature to legislate different aspect of the fundamental objectives and directive principles like was done with the issue of corruption before you can now use it to uh, uh, call leaders accountable. So that is one area in which we have to really look at. Even our chapter four of fundamental rights, in terms of guaranteeing free trial right, though the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015 and the AGCLs of the various states the most comprehensive of which is that of so of 2019, has done a lot in guaranteeing also 
access to justice, to ensure speedy trial, to make the criminal justice response. And nonetheless, there are still so many areas that need to be improved upon. So okay. it is a work in progress. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we've since been joined by um, Mr. Debayo Ojo, also the Senior Advocate of Nigeria and former Attorney General of Oyo State. Good morning, sir. Hello. Mr. Ojo, are you there? Okay, I think he's, uh, we, we don't have him more uh, for now, but, but certainly when we have him, we'll, we'll take him back. You know, but Mr. Usman, you know, the issues are definitely varied in all of these. The question then remains, what really does it take? There are those who say that there are certain parts of our laws that conflict. And, and I think you have yes. also just said it now that there is a part that it's right there in the law, but it is, it's subjective to when whoever yes. it is that's supposed to execute it says it is. So these conflicting yes. laws, how did they come to be in the first place? And how do we ensure that it doesn't happen again? Well, uh, first of all, you know, apart from the traditional justice system, when the colonialists came, they introduced the main body of English law by ordinance number two of 1863 first to the colony of Lagos, and then after amalgamation the whole of the federation at that time uh at, at 1916 we have one criminal legislation the criminal court that operates throughout the federation but uh after certain constitutional conferences and constitutional uh amendments from lugard constitution clifford mcpherson richard and the rest of them the involvement of citizens ensured that the peculiarities of each sections of the country are taken into consideration. And later, in terms of criminal justice, we have to also uh, bring in the penal code for northern states and then have dual criminal justice system. Now, the system is common law, and common law is hierarchic and based on stare decisis, decisions that were done by uh, courts past decisions of superior for that all other courts lower in the judicial hierarchy must control and follow, uh, regardless of the nature of those decisions. So there's a lot of latitude and discretion uh, in terms of decision. So what we need to do because of our level of development and even our level of patriotism is to ensure that uh, some of this discretion are guided by legislation, given the present circumstances. And as time goes on, maybe we relax some of those uh, 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 provisions to allow for more discretion. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the reasons that these two conflicting decisions. For instance, most of those conflicts are more or less in the court of appeal, where we have so many divisions. So there needs to have a mechanism whereby leveraging on technology, all justices of the Court of Appeal will be updated with the stations of each division real time, so that whenever a matter arises for the termination in which a division has uh, decided upon, the other division would have the leverage quickly in real time to have that decision. And also, sometimes even their conferences can be harmonized so that whenever matters of constitutional importance are to be decided by a division, other divisions can, with technology now, be brought into the picture so that a, a holistic decision will be taken to avoid some of these uh, conflicts that you have in, in, in judgments and decisions of court. And one of the reasons also is uh, corruption, mm. judicial corruption. And well, that know, is what... Uh, Mm. My apologies. You know, uh, Mr. Osman, I, I really don't envy legal practitioners. Sincerely, I mean, you have become, you have been attorney general of a whole state. So sometimes when you have to deal with some issues, you're wondering, uh, you know, there is the provision of the law and then there is the fact of whether or not it is justiciable. Sincerely, I don't envy um, those of you who have to interpret these laws to clients and back and forth. But there is one, one, one of those things that I don't know how you would interpret it to us so that people all over the country can understand. 
Um, for instance, there is a question I've heard a few times that there is a difference between penal code and the criminal code and that some some are wondering why should we have um, the criminal code in one part of nigeria and the penal code in another part of nigeria if you can speak to that one and whether or not that is that should be discussed at this justice sector reform summit yes you know criminal law usually is uh, local because it is the community, it is the government on behalf of the community that determines what is a crime. And uh, that is why in, in terms of uh, the nation, you have differences in terms of criminal jurisprudence. In the South, there are certain offenses that are uh, uh, regarded as, of, uh, as offenses in the South, but in the North, they are not offenses because of uh, uh, influence of Islamic law and Sharia. But regardless of uh, the jurisdiction, it is the state that determine what is criminal on behalf of the citizen. And therefore, those offenses are now put into the court by way of qualification for easy understanding and for easy administration. So that is the difference. The difference is mainly in offenses that are Islamic law-based and offenses that are common law-based. Uh, most of the offenses that are offenses in the South are still offenses in the North, largely. But where uh, Sharia Penal Court operates, Sharia Penal Court operates on Muslims, and the Penal Court operates on non-Muslims. Okay. Um... Mr. The, the former Attorney General of your state, uh, Mr. Adebayo Ojo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, is now with us. Good morning, Mr. Ojo. Good morning. Yes. Now, uh, these uh, justice reforms that we're looking at, um, what kind of things are you expecting the reforms to actually look at and achieve? Thank you for asking me. First and foremost, I must uh, commend the Honorable Attorney of the Federation, Mr. Latif Sadbimi, SCN, for coming up with that great and laudable idea. So you ask me now the type of reforms that the summit to talk about it's what the honorable general has in mind is holistic approach is total overhauling of the entire system within the justice sector not only about the law but the institutions that make up the justice sector be it infrastructure facilities personnel, the law itself, and the legal framework. So it is holistic. Everything now is going to be refilled overall um, so that they can be in tune in line with the world-based practice, with the modern reality, so that Nigeria won't lag behind. Because we have a lot of uh, factors that have kept us back and we has made even the internal community to be losing faith in our justice system, so to say. Mm. But now, the Honorable Attorney of the Federation is now saying we have to look at all this and see, we all know the challenges. Then, after the five challenges, how do we move forward, how do we move forward to rectify the same so that we, we uh, I, I, how, do I, how, how do I put it now? So that you can take the justice, so the, the, the justice sector to the next level, yeah. as we used to say in, the, as in Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Ojo, um, after every election cycle, there's always plenty of talk that points to, um, uh, it would seem like, the whole nation is questioning the integrity 
of the justice system in Nigeria and the integrity of those who are practicing it. Are you hoping that things will be looked at that will reduce this kind of, I would call it, um, insult, if you don't mind me using the word, that is cast on your profession after every election cycle? You see, we are just... Mr. Ojo? Yes, I'm here. Okay, I'm with you. go ahead, go ahead. You see, we must not be unfair to the... Hello? We can hear you, we go ahead. Not, we must not be unfair to the system. You see, the problem we have is largely systemic. It's largely systemic. And one cannot uh, really pigeonhole it to if. I think the network is really very interesting, if I can say. <laughs> well, Mr. Usman, I don't know if you want to speak to that same issue. Interesting. Yes, well, like he said, uh, yeah. There are systemic issues that has to do with uh, post election dispute. But largely, most of these things are also the result of manipulation by politicians. Uh, a lot of pressures have been uh, uh, put on judges. And also, in terms of proof, you know, when it comes to justice, it's only if you are able to prove your case that you will be entitled to judgment. Uh, legal justice is not like social justice that's even handed, that, uh, you know, come to, uh, like a coin when you, 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 you toss it off, it come to rest on the ring. In, in terms of uh, legal justice, it's either head or tail. So sometimes allegations can be made, but when it comes to proof, there is no credible proof. And uh, the justice system cannot decide without credible evidence. And not only just the credibility of the evidence, they also the, 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 the quantum of proof, the, the degree, the standard of proof has to be there. Most of the allegations are criminal in nature, and the law says you have to prove beyond reasonable doubt. And because of the diversity of the constituents of election, the main unit being the polling unit, to be able to prove every infraction at every polling unit given our even infrastructural development, even ability to gather evidence, most of these evidences are lost the moment the ele election is declared. Okay. So you have to have a sort of uh, 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 mechanism whereby you gather evidence real time at the time it's happening and you preserve it in the proper legal format. And also you have to also plead it okay. specifically and then prove it. So some of these technicalities are mm -hmm. also there to ensure justice are also uh, becoming a hindrance in the ability of some uh, petitioners, especially in election petition, to prove their case. Well, you know, there are so many questions to ask on that particular one. Why should we prioritize election um, cases over every other? For mm -hmm. which reason some will say there are tens of thousands of cases uh, are, are still lagging it in the It deals with course. governance. You have to have leadership. Okay. before you can do anything. Okay. So that is one of the reasons. But I agree that we should reform also the civil justice system. Okay. I was a member of the Legal Practitioner Disciplinary Committee between 2020 to 2023. And what we did to fast track cases before the LPDC is to uh, make sure that we adopt uh, the issue of affidavit evidence. In the civil justice system now, what we have is witness deposition whereby even after you front load your witness depositions and documents that you need to rely on the determination of improving your case, you have to come to court to adopt. Mm -hmm. But at LPDC, by 2010 rules, 2020 rules, what we did was to make uh, intended witness to swear to an affidavit. Because well, affidavit yeah. in the service and evidence, so that even if you are not in court, when yeah. the proceedings are to be taken, it can be adopted mm. and then uh, yeah, and Mr. Osman, we could go on and on about this. Every election cycle, we talk about electoral reforms, and we're still at the same 
Should I say train station? But hey, perhaps some other time we'll take that on. But we have to thank you very much. This one has been very, very enlightening what you've given to us. Solaban Usman is a senior advocate of Nigeria and former attorney general of Sokoto State. We've also had with us, though briefly, uh, Adebayo Ojo, who is also a senior advocate of Nigeria and former attorney general of Oyo State. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here this morning. Thank you so much, Vibe. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. So we'll be back in a moment to take on another issue of similar prominence in the course of the week. Please stay with us.